target acquired. What's up guys and welcome back to Overkill Gaming, your number one source for handheld gaming. It feels like it was literally just yesterday that I was telling you how much I love handheld companion for the Steam Deck and how I believe that it is an absolute necessity for handheld gaming in Windows. Wait, it was just yesterday. Well, here we are one day later and handheld companion has just received the biggest update to date with a ton of new features, improvements, and bug fixes. Not just for the Steam Deck, but for every other handheld as well, which is awesome because not only do I use Handheld Companion on my Steam Deck, but I have even replaced Aya Space on my Aya Neo with Handheld Companion as well. And when I get my ally, I will probably replace Armory Crate with Handheld Companion on that device too, depending on how I feel about Armory Crate. And so now we're gonna go over some of the new features here in this video. If you can't tell, I am very excited to go over this. This is a huge step forward for Handheld Companion and this app just keeps getting better and better. But before we dive in, if you guys enjoy this kind of content or find it helpful and would like to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like button and also consider subscribing as well so that you do not miss out on future content like this. We cover tips, tricks, and gameplay performance for the Steam Deck as well as other handhelds such as the Aya Neo and the soon to be released ROG Ally. You definitely do not want to miss out on any of it. All right, so now let's go over what's new. As many of you know, I use custom on-screen performance overlays to keep an eye on performance while playing games. Well, prior to now, this is something that I had to set up separately from Handheld Companion by downloading HWinfo and RTSS, and then linking it to HC in the hotkeys section in order to toggle it on and off. Well, in this new release, it will automatically install HWinfo and RTSS for us. Handheld Companion will also now include an on-screen overlay with multiple levels so that you can easily monitor vital information like FPS, CPU and GPU usage, and clock speeds without having to leave the game. This version will also come with a built-in frame rate limiter. Say goodbye to screen tearing. Now you can set a frame rate limiter based on your screen's refresh rate per profile. Let's talk about Auto TDP. This is huge and something I am extremely excited to see in Handheld Companion, and this will really come in handy for more power-hungry handhelds like the Aya Neo and ROG Ally. For those who are unfamiliar with Auto TDP, this gives us the ability to automatically adjust the TDP based on a specific FPS target, and we can make this profile specific. So rather than guessing what your TDP should be to hit say 60 or 40 FPS, we can set our desired frame rate target and allow handheld companion to dynamically adjust the TDP to maintain the desired frame rate. Ultimately, this will result in better battery life. This is a feature that is not currently available in the Armory Crate at the moment. We can now also fine tune our GPU clock speeds per profile for optimal gameplay. Volume up and down and brightness controls have now been added to the hotkeys section. They have also added a new Steam Deck rumble engine so that you can immerse yourself in a more tactile gaming experience with improved haptic feedback. And for my Aya Neo gamers, we now have support for the Aya Neo Air Plus. So you are now able to use this instead of Aya Space should you so choose. We also now have a CPU boost mode for an extra kick of processing power when you need it, or you can disable it for less power consumption. Also, we could now optimize our CPU GPU energy performance balance preferences for each game or application. Along with all of those new additions, there have also been several improvements to existing features. For example, fan override on quick tools, desktop toggle has been added into the main GUI controller page, making it a lot easier to switch between desktop and gaming modes. The process of creating profiles and using default settings is much more simplified and profiles will activate automatically based on the applications you're using. Lizard mode has been completely removed power control using a better API, enhanced haptic feedback for a more immersive gaming experience. There is now a layout exporter and manager so you can share and manage your custom layouts effortlessly. And much, much 
more. For a complete description of all of the improvements and bug fixes, click on the link down in the description to get the full details. Now, a few things that I would love to see in a future update, devs, if you're listening, one would be an all-in-one game library manager, a single location where you can manage and launch all of your games so that we don't have to fiddle around with several different launchers. I know that apps like this already exist. A good example of this would be Play Night, but it would be awesome to have this feature built into Handheld's companion, similar to Armory Crate and Space. It would also be nice to have a feature to record gameplay and capture screenshots from within a game. This may be a tall order, so I won't be holding my breath. So there it is guys, everything you needed to know about this latest update. Check it out for yourselves. The link can be found in the description. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. It's a great way to support the channel. Let us know what you guys think about Handheld Companion and this latest update down in the comments. Will you be giving it a try? Will you be using it on the Steam Deck or on another handheld device? Also, any questions or concerns, feel free to drop those there as well. We'll be sure to respond as time permits. Until next time, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Target acquired.